everyone. Um, I'm Akila. I'm the Head of Customer Success Engineering at Raza, and today I'm here with uh, Tim Carlson from Travelers, which is an um, insurance company in the U.S. And yeah, we're going to talk a bit about um, the bots he's building with his team at Travelers. Um, so yeah, Tim, do you want to give us an introduction and just talk a bit about the bots you're building? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, so my name is Tim Carlson. I'm a product manager on our AI team here at Travelers. Uh, and my team is really focused on uh, pushing forward the virtual system capability of travelers. Um, so that's both looking at our, our voice and our, and our uh, chatbot skills um, you know, that, that we have on our, on our websites. And, and yeah, we, we started this journey a couple of years ago. Um, we've, we certainly you know, made a lot of progress and, and had a lot of learnings you know, as, as we've gone, as gone through this. Uh, yeah, I think our, our main focus has been customer um, experience and continuing to improve the customer experience across a number of different you know, avenues. So whether it's you know, claim related, so customers that are um, you know, looking to potentially file a claim and have some questions related to that, uh, or service related. So you know, customers um, who are attempting to do something with their policy, you know, make changes, um, get information that, that you know, isn't handy, uh, you know, really focusing on how we can you know, best serve our, our customers. Awesome. Cool. And so you've got a bunch of different bots in production at the moment, right? Yeah. So currently we have uh, two consumer facing uh, virtual assistants, uh, as well as uh, Alexa skills. Um, yeah, that are also you know, focused on, on our customers. Cool. Yeah. And could you, um, yeah, maybe tell me a bit about um, what the journey to production looked like there for one or any of the bots. Um, I'm sure you've got a lot of experience with that now. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, you know, I'd say it was definitely a, a learning process as, as we went through. Uh, you know, I think even to you know starting point of defining you know, what we want to answer. Um, you know, we we took data from you know, a number of different places or um, that that we had internally that really showed uh, what are the types of questions that people are going to ask most frequently. You know, just based on what we're seeing them search for. Um, you know, what we know that comes into the to the call centers. So you know, they really helped kind of define that that scope and. Uh, you know, then we, you know, really just, just drove forward with that um, while in the meantime trying to determine, you know, what's our technology stack going to look like, um, mm -hmm. you know, what's the design of the, of the bot going to be, you know, like literally down to like the, the colors and the uh, look and feel of, of the widget box. Um, so you know, a lot of decisions that were being made in, in parallel, um, you know, related to, to the design, the architecture, you know, the modeling, you know, aspects and, and what the actual scope was going to be. And, and then ultimately, um, you know, we knew, you know, going to market, we were, um, you know, trying to get something in place that maybe wasn't perfect that we'd need to, to go back and iterate through and continually, you know, build. So I think we, um, you know, set the expectation early uh, with, with our business and, um, you know, definitely, you know, once we rolled out into to production, had some, uh, you know, great insights, you know, from, from day one, actually, you know, five minutes in, people started asking some questions that I knew we didn't handle. And I knew that we needed to very quickly, you know, turn around some of these, um, you know, enhancements and, and add new intents and, and optimize the models in, in some cases. Right. Yeah. So the idea was basically you guys pushed it out um, early on and then kind of um, learned from there to, um, yeah, to make improvements in the bot. This is a general concept for the first one. I'd say for some of the subsequent ones that we've been focusing on and, and rolling out, um, you know, we've actually taken a lot of those lessons and significantly uh, decreased the time it took to, to build um, really any, you know, whether it's a bot or um, you know, just rolling out enhancements to, to one of the exi existing implementations. Uh, I'd say we've, we significantly cut down that time, but um, but yeah, it's just it's interesting because you know you, you build something, um, you know, not knowing what people are going to ask, right? So, yeah. uh, you're working with with teams, and if you're in a kind of enterprise environment, you have many different um, you know, organizations, uh, many times kind of siloed or in different parts of the, of the organization, and um, you don't realize sometimes the customers are coming in, they're, they're looking at you as kind of one brand. So if I go to, yeah. I don't know, Nike or Bank of America, I'm, I'm thinking as like kind of one one company, right? So uh, they're coming in, they're asking just a variety of questions that, you know, cross organizations, uh, cross, you know, many different, um, you know, capabilities that we have. So we have to be prepared to answer those. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I mean, what was your biggest learning so far about um, shipping these bots? Uh, I think the variety of what we saw was, was fairly mm -hmm. interesting. It is one of the learnings um, you know, from my standpoint. I think we, we saw that the top 10 intents were less than 50% of what was asked. So the first couple were, were kind of significant, you know, the you know, eight, 10% of, of questions came in, but once you started to get to like that, you know, that 10 outside the top 10, that's like 1% of all questions asked or 0.8%. So uh, it gets really small, really quick. So being able to 
and think through the different ways you can um, you know, be able to give a, the customer a good experience and, and come yeah. back with uh, you know, content that's relevant and help them you know, resolve whatever they're, they're looking to do is, is really important. So that's been a lot of our focus now is I think we've, we've gone broad and we've, we've rolled out um, you know, quite a bit of, of content and you know, the ability to answer a number of different questions. And now it's so figuring out how to go a little bit deeper and, and solve um, you know, some of these questions, get down to maybe more the, as Alex would say, at the level, the level three virtual assistant uh, mm -hmm. and being able to you know, go a little bit deeper in what we can do. Yeah, for sure. Cool. And so, I mean, you mentioned that like um, the customers ask a lot of questions you wouldn't expect or didn't expect to be the most frequently asked. So how do you handle that at the moment? Um, so I mean, we, we actually, we're looking at the data uh, really every day. So trying to understand what people are asking, what, what they're not asking. Um, I mean, so currently, you know, if someone's asking something that's, that's totally not covered, you know, we're coming back with the, the standard kind of default message, um, you know, that we don't understand. Uh, we are ultimately um, you know, building in some new capabilities that will trans the, uh, escalate that to a live uh, chat rep. Um, so that's one thing that I think a lesson learned is we looked at some of the feedback we're getting from our customers. You know, people just want to talk to a person if we couldn't answer what they're, what they're looking for. So uh, right. that capability is, is going live pretty soon. But I mean, really, I think it's just you know, how do we continually look at that data um, you know, on, a, on a constant basis and, and either build a new content or figure out what, what makes sense to, to do in certain scenarios. Uh, one thing that was kind of interesting uh, as we were rolling out, you know, some of our, our claim, um, you know, bots was that people that were coming in, and, and we had this on a unauthenticated page. You didn't actually need to be a Travelers customer to to talk to it. We actually got a lot of people that weren't Travelers customers, but had gotten hit by Travelers customers. So, um, oh, you know, right. your, your insured hit me. Do what I do. So we actually saw pretty good adoption from from non Travelers customers, which I thought was you know, fairly interesting and. It brings in some you know, additional complexities of, of how do you answer those questions? You know, what are you, um, you know, legally allowed to say in this, the circumstances? Mm -hmm. And essentially, how do we provide a decent customer experience for someone that's maybe not necessarily our customer? Right. Yeah. Sure. So it's a lot of just like refining and talking um, to your content team, I guess, what you're allowed to say there, and just making sure that's the best um, possible interaction. Yeah, we have a whole process in place right now um, with with teams from you know, different parts of the organizations. Um, but we have I call it kind of matrix teams, and really I, I call it a super matrix environment um, where we have our communication groups, um, so it's multiple teams communications, user experience, uh, multiple legal groups um, who who weigh on, on on what we say. Um, ultimately, you know, we're in a, in a highly regulated environment, so you have to be you know, cautious about you know some of the things uh, you know how you respond because it can be. Um, either perceived by the customer or perceived legally as you know something that uh is either giving you know advice and, and maybe when we were not necessarily looking to give like hard advice or, or give like hard answers so um we definitely need to be a little bit cautious but we have a, a fairly super matrix team that you know, as we've gone through um is getting more educated with some of the situations that we're gonna you know that we've run into uh and it's really um you know led to i think a you know quicker um turnaround time for, for some of the content we've been rolling out just based on some of the education Mm -hmm. Right. So it really takes like quite a variety of different people to build a spot rather than just a small um, group of developers. Absolutely. Uh, and I think, you know, part of the infrastructure for that was already, you know, built just, you know, you know, due to the, the teams we already have set up in, in place. So um, I mean, we have, we have, you know, communications groups, we have our legal teams. Um, so, you know, so for some of the, you know, those groups is really just adding some additional accountability to, be able to, to weigh in on um, you know some of the, the content we're putting to market. So a lot of the infrastructure was already in place. Uh, I think it's just figuring out how do you kind of optimally you know use you know the the teams that are you know currently you know, accountable for certain um, you know, aspects of things like communicating to to customers um, and what we put on our, our web entities and you know effectively you know mash that against the need to go to market fairly quickly with um, you know some of the the content and, and questions we're seeing. Right. Yeah, and um, so going back to, because um, you said you monitor like daily what people ask the bot and so on and analyze that. So um, yeah, what does an update to the bot look like? Like when you identify, say, a customer is asking or customers are asking one type of question frequently, what does the process look like there um, when you decide to add a new skill, for example? Um, so it, I think it's really based on the, the type of change you're looking at. I mean, we, there's you can you know, be simply updating the model. So in model optimization, you can be adding you know brand new intent, which requires some uh, some additional downstream changes. Um, you could be changing the answer. So I think you know, you're updating the model, changing the answer you know, fairly quick. 
Um, you can you do those, you, you spin them up, you're really not changing content or um, in some cases, maybe it's a, it's a legal review for, for like the answer, for example. Yeah. When you start to add, do things like add intents, I, I think some of the other capabilities we put in place that actually check um, which is distribution channel someone comes in through. So you know, we're actually not allowed to, or kind of our policy is not to um, provide self-service or have self-service for you know, customers based on the distribution channel, based on some of our agreements with um, our agents and, and other Mm -hmm. um, you know, entities. So what we do is, as we're adding new intents, you know, one of the first questions we ask is, you know, is this something that we can even, you know, do? Is this something right. we can answer, you know, through through this channel? And what type of customer is this? So uh, there's definitely some additional checks to um, to call different services that would give us that uh, information. Um, but then it's essentially making those changes, you know, packaging it up, and then going through the say the typical kind of CI/CD uh, you know pipeline to to roll production with some you know, regression testing, obviously, along the way. Right, yeah. And so what does that CI, CD pipeline look like? What kind of tests do you run through there to make sure um, things are running smoothly? Uh, so again, it's a little bit on, you know, based on the change. I'd say yeah. from a model standpoint, certainly we're, we're checking that to make sure that, you know, you know intent by intent, you know, there's a degradation in, in, in the accuracy and the F1 scores that we've seen. So uh, as we're rolling out either new intents or even optimizing the model, uh, I'm keeping a really close eye on, you know, is this something that uh, we think is going to improve accuracy for what we're seeing or, or not? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and beyond that, I mean, we do do some, you know, some UI testing and um, again, in kind of a larger corporate environment, you know, with many, many environments. Um, so there really is a, a process, a predetermined process for, for going through that, that pipeline um, up to production uh, and, you know, appropriate kind of checks and tests along the way. Yeah. For sure, cool. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, testing, we think at least, is uh, one of the most important <laughs> parts just to make sure everything's still running smoothly. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, yeah. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add there? Um, just about your processes or? Um, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, it's been, it's been a really good uh, you know, a couple of years as we've kind of continued to, to learn more. And, uh, you know, I think one of the, the key things we're focused on is speed for this next year. So yeah. I think we've built a lot of the foundational components. Um, our, our velocity is continued to be high in terms of you know, how quickly we're, we're doing it, but, you know, understanding, you know, how can we go faster? How can, how can we roll out changes even quicker? Um, how can we roll out some of these more advanced capabilities even faster? Uh, is definitely something that the team is focused on. And we have a uh, you know, a group of, of leaders looking at hey, how do we uh, you know, really tear down some of the, the barriers that the team might face today um, or roadblocks and, and get the, uh, you know, changes out faster. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense. Awesome. All right. Then, yeah, thanks a lot for chatting with me about all this. And um, to everyone that's watching, we are doing a live Q&A after this. So if you have any questions for Tim, then please join us there. Yeah, thanks for having us. Appreciate it.